In our last episode of the Battle of the Coffee Brewers, we had the French press versus the Aero press. And I complained on that video about the French press being a pain to clean out. And in the comments, a lot of you mentioned that the Clever Dripper is actually a really good alternative to the French press. It's an immersion dripper without the cleanup. I'd never used one before, so I did what any coffee lover does. I went out and bought one. I bought one, I tested it, I played with it, I've tried different recipes, and I've come to find that it's really clever. I also came to realize that our next coffee brewer battle, our next coffee brewer showdown, should be a Clever Dripper versus a V60. They're two drippers or two coffee brewer systems that look very similar. They're both V-shaped, they're both 60 degree shaped, they both have little handles, they look like the same sort of thing, but they're not. They're totally different. So I'm going to explain both of them on today's episode. I'm going to walk you through and I'm going to drink the coffee from both of them and give you my thoughts on it. And we're going to start with the V60. So we'll put this to the side. The V60 is a percolation style coffee brewer, which means you pour water in the top, the water passes through the coffee grind and you get coffee in the bottom. It's also a very hands-on coffee brewer. It's the type of coffee brewer that I personally love because I love the experimental process of it. I love trying different techniques. I like trying different recipes. And I really love the cup of coffee that comes out of it. And there's a thousand different ways to make a V60. I'm just gonna do kind of a base standard recipe. So let's get this started. This is the V60 itself. These are the Hario uh, number three filters we're gonna use. We're gonna put the filter in and then we're going to also wet the filter. I'm using the espresso machine at home. Of course, you can just use a regular kettle. And the reason you're doing that is just to get rid of that, you know, any dust or anything that might be on the filter. We'll put that back on. We're on a scale here. The scale also has a timer. Turn that on. And for both the Clever and the V60, I'm going to be using basically the same recipe. I like a slightly stronger coffee. I think standard is about 15 grams. I tend to do 20 grams in my coffee. So I'm going to load up 20 grams of our Achuga. This is a Kenya AB washed bean. It's a really surprising coffee. It actually is lemongrass is one of the tasting notes. Lemongrass, blackberry, dried cranberries, pomegranate. It's really unique. One of the big challenges of a V60 is grind size. It's almost as intricate as the grind size of an espresso. When you're dialing in an espresso, it can take you 100 grams of beans just to get it right. It can be the same with V60, especially when you're new in coffee. You have to kind of play with it a little bit. I do have the grind size figured out for this, and maybe I'll do a video in the future about grind size specifically, but I'm not gonna do that now. I'm just gonna grind this and show you how it works. So we're all ground up here and I'm going to drop this in and I should say using a number three filter for this amount of coffee is overkill. You could use a number two or even a number one, but this is what we have. So I'm just going to settle that in there. I'm going to indent a little finger hole in the middle and I'm going to add water. Water is another thing people like to argue about when it comes to coffee. But like the grind size, every coffee is different. I will use anything from 93 up to 96 degrees, depending on the coffee. I found for this V60 version with this Achuga, 93, 94 is about that sweet spot. So that's what we got going here. I'm going to tar out the scale and I'm just going to pour the coffee right into the middle and then slowly work my way to the outside until I get about 60, 50, 60 grams of water in here and all the beans are saturated. Probably be about 50 grams. And then I'm gonna hit the timer. And this is the balloon. This is where a lot of the gases pull out of the beans. And it's just, it's a really cool part to watch because you do see the coffee grow and bloom. It's almost like a, volcan a volcano. Your bloom time can vary again from 30 seconds to 45 seconds. I tend to do 45 seconds for most coffees. For this one, I'm just doing 30 seconds. I've got 50 grams in, and now I'm just add another 100 grams to make it 150 
right in the middle of the cup, just swirling around to the outside really, really slowly. And I'm just trying to establish a consistent flow rate. So I'm only doing 50 grams actually. Some people would stir the grinds now. I tend to just pick things up and spin it a little bit, swish it. What that does is it settles the bed of the coffee. And then now every 45 seconds or 30 seconds, I just add another 50 grams of coffee. I always pour towards the middle and then make my way out. The whole process should be about three minutes, three and a half minutes, depending again on the coffee and how you like the coffee. If it runs faster, it might come out really acidic, maybe a little bit thin and light. If it's running really uh, slow, it might come out a little bit bitter. With this Ichuga, we do run it a little bit slower. It's about four minutes in total. And that helps bring out some of the, the sweet berries actually in this coffee. So I'm gonna add more up to 200 grams. And I'm just watching the timer. And every 45 seconds, I'm just adding another uh, 50 grams of water. Add another 50 grams. And the reason you just keep adding small amounts of water like this is to just keep the flow rate the same. Keep that water passing through the coffee at the same rate the entire time, but also to keep agitating the bed of coffee so it doesn't just get clumped together and stuck. And coffee smells amazing. One of the reasons I love the V60 version is it's so hands-on. You're right on top of the coffee. There's no machine, there's nothing automatic. It's all you, it's you and the coffee, and it's a really nice way to learn about a coffee. So if you love that hands-on ritualistic experience of coffee, this is probably the style of coffee brewer for you. Uh, our total weight of water in is 300 grams. So that was 20 grams of coffee and 300 grams of water. When the coffee soaks up a lot of the water, it should leave us with about 250 grams of water or a full cup. So we're just gonna wait for that to clear through. And again, there's about a thousand different ways to do this process. Some people use a spoon and stir. Some people use a really coarse grind size and they just constantly slowly pour the water for the entire three minutes. And some people drop in almost all of the water and just sit back and let the, the process happen. There's no wrong way to do it as long as you like the coffee at the end. That's it. One of the great things about the V60 is the cleanup. You literally just take that off. If there's any water, you might let it dry off a bit, or you just pull out the filter and drop it in the bin, rinse off the filter, and you're done. So this is the Achuga in a comically large coffee jug. It smells incredibly good. There's even, I get some honey in the taste actually, in the smell. Let's find a nice little glass. A nice spin, such an aromatic coffee. One of the things I love about the V60 flavors or the taste that comes off of V60 is it's such a clean cup of coffee. So if you really appreciate the tasting notes of coffee, you'll appreciate a V60. The tasting notes really come through. I'm getting lots of lemongrass, lots of black currants, even some dark chocolate in there as well. Really beautiful. I'm gonna set this to the side and let it cool off. And then we'll test that against the, the Clever Dripper. That's what the guy's called. So the Clever Dripper is here. The Clever Dripper looks like a V60, but it's not. It's an immersion coffee brewer. The way it works is if you're setting it flat on a surface like this, there's a valve at the bottom and no water can get out. But if you push this part, it opens the valve and every bit of the liquid comes out the bottom. So let's make a cup of coffee with it. The way that we, we're gonna work this um, dripper is pretty similar in the startup to the, the V60. With the Clever Dripper system, it recommends using a number four filter, which is bigger than this. And I tested both. And I think that yes, the number four fits the system better, but if you're making a single cup, it's totally unnecessary. So we're using a number three filter here. I also tested the flat base filters versus the conical filters, and I found no difference between, in the taste between both of them. So we're gonna put the filter in. Again, I'm using the espresso machine. You can just use any kettle. The filter's wet. 
I'm going to clear it by pushing the base to let all the water out. You can also just tip the water out the front. In fact, you should probably do both. And you've got yourself a filter. It might seem obvious that you shouldn't brew with the brewer on a cup, but that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. You put it off to the side on a scale or on the ground. I'm gonna grind my coffee. Again, I'm doing 20 grams of our beautiful lechuga because I really wanna compare the taste between the V60 and the Clever. I've found, and I tested for ages at home, I found that the grind size for the Clever was interestingly almost identical to my pour over grind size. I've got water boiling back here. And one of the great things about the Clever system is it's a lot more hands off. If you're a busy person and you just want a great cup of coffee, but you don't wanna sit there pouring for three minutes, this is probably a better cup of coffee for you. I'm taking fully boiling water and I'm going to put 300 grams of water into this. They say that you can do up to 500 grams of water in here if you have a, a number four filter, uh, but 300 and we're gonna put the 20 grams of coffee in now. And the reason that we're putting the coffee in on top and not at the bottom is when I was testing the first time I put the coffee in first and then the water and it clogged up at the bottom and there was actually dry grind in there that the water just passed around. So by doing this, we should get all the coffee saturated properly. I put boiling water in, not because I'm going to brew it boiled, despite the fact it's a light roast, but because by the time it hits the brewer and by the time I finish talking and stuff like that and grinding the coffee, it'll be down to about 96 degrees, where it, which is what I wanted at. So now I'm gonna drop this in and I'm just gonna give it a little stir to get it nice and saturated while simultaneously starting the timer. So just a nice little gentle stir. And I'm just gonna leave this for two minutes. Much like a French press, that's it. Just let the coffee sit. I tested a lot of coffee at home with the Clever to just try to figure out what sort of time I want. And I found two minutes to be the absolute sweet spot. If I went two and a half minutes, the coffee was a little bit bitter tasting. If I went anything less, the coffee was a little bit weak. And I also found that the grind size was really, really important. I started out imagining, thinking that I needed probably French, French press coarseness, which is really coarse. And I was getting extremely watery, thin coffee. I eventually got finer and finer to the point that I was V60-ish and was getting much richer, fuller coffee. Okay, so we're coming up on two minutes. That's, like I said, my sweet spot. And I'm gonna give it another stir. And the reason I'm giving it another stir now is because a crust forms on the top of coffee. And I want that crust to drop down to the bottom and I want a bed to form. So I'm going to knock it down. I'm also gonna give it a little swish. And then this is where the magic happens. I'm gonna lift this up and put this there. And I'm going to drop the Clever cleverly on top of this glass and the coffee comes through. And this whole process of the water passing through the coffee should take about a minute in itself. This is kind of why it's not fully immersion. It's immersion mixed with percolation. And you might've seen when the coffee came out at first, it was very light and it's getting darker and darker. And that's because the water at the bottom isn't getting as much coffee touching it. It's kind of maybe the flaw of the shape of this coffee dripper. Whereas a French press, the water's kind of absorbing the coffee at the same rate. Because of the conical shape, it doesn't exactly work like that. Also, there's a little bit at the bottom that holds water, but no coffee is in that space. So it started off pretty light looking. You can see now it's done. And again, the beauty of this, like the V60, probably the one thing they have the most in common is that you can now take this off your cup, you can take the grinds and you can drop them in your bin, you can rinse this off and make another cup. So it's a really clever system, it's an aptly named system. I think it's also a tasty system. 
Uh, let's try this coffee. It's a little bit hot for my liking, so maybe I'll let it sit for a second. Should not have done this in glass, but I wanted you to see the color. And again, it is a really, really good cup of coffee. I would say it tastes a little bit thinner than the V60. It tastes a little less clean and crisp than the V60. When I do the Clever Dripper, I do get a lot of that, but it's a little bit more muddied tasting. It's a really sweet, delicious cup of coffee, but it's not as sharp and edgy, if that makes any sense at all. Um, but yeah, absolutely beautiful cup of coffee. I wanna wait until they cool down, so like 10 minutes, if it stays bright enough. And I wanna try both of these coffees cold because I think that's where you can really, truly appreciate the coffee. Both the coffees have now cooled down to about room temperature. I'm going to test them again, but just on the eye test, I can tell that the coffee on the right, which is the V60, is a little bit darker. And that likely means it was either extracted better or over extracted. And this one, which is the Clever, is a little bit lighter looking, meaning it was potentially a little bit under extracted. You know, less extracted and more extracted doesn't necessarily mean a better or worse coffee, it just means more extracted or less extracted. So, gonna drink some sparkling water to cleanse the palate. Fun fact, I hate sparkling water. It just tastes like rotten water. Okay, cupping spoon to pretend I'm cool. Gonna scoop out the V60 version first. So good, it's so, so good. Um, it's just, coffee from the V60, it just has so much life to it, in my opinion. You get so much complexity in the cup, in my opinion. That, that's just an absolutely beautiful cup of coffee. So I'm gonna clean that cup of coffee from my mouth with this horrible sparkling water. Water is literally the second best drink in the world aside from coffee. Why ruin it with bubbles? We're going to try now the Clever Dripper one. Scoop it up. Oh, and that's really interesting actually. It's identical coffees. They taste extremely different. I would say that the left cup of coffee and the right cup of coffee are almost like a direct translation of how they're made. The Clever Cup comes across very sweet and easy and smooth. It doesn't punch you in the face. It kind of gives you a nice coffee hug. It's a really easy drinking cup of coffee. And I think that's so interesting because this cup of coffee is almost for somebody that loves, you know, the whole process of coffee, including the tasting and really, you know, trying to find the notes and things like that. Whereas the Clever Dripper is a really easy coffee to make and is maybe for the type of person that really loves coffee and really loves a good cup of coffee, but doesn't have a whole lot of time to sit there with the ritual of making it. It's a very interesting dynamic. And I would say neither of these cups of coffee are better than the other. They're just extremely different. The V60 kind of wows you and slaps you across the face. The Clever gives you a nice coffee hug. And right now, I think I need a hug. And we'll see you guys on the next video.